Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, shooting line. This is, is something that we discuss whenever we talk about beef shooting, uh, which we've done on a previous video. Uh, we get, you know, beef is great. It's a, it's a foundation of, of, of how we shoot and the procedures we go through. But uh, when we go in more in depth and talk about shooting, we talk about shooter's line as well. Uh, we got Matt here uh, getting into triple threat catching the basketball. When we talk shooting, shooting line, we talk our balance, elbow, eyes, follow through. And when he gets into position, shooting line is basically this. I tell a kid that when we freeze a jump shot, especially a, a spot up jump shot, a free throw, something like that, you should be able to get into position from your foot to your knee, elbow, wrist, and eye. And it's, we, talk, we say it's called the shooter's eye. What Matt should be able to do is if he puts this ball on the pedestal, he should be able to take his pointer finger off and basically be pointing right at his shooting eye. Okay, um, That is a perfect shooting line. Also what we talk about, when we talk about balance, elbow, eyes, follow through, we, we, in the shooting line, we talk a lot about the end follow through. Um, just to say follow through is not enough. How do you follow through? And everybody thinks wrist. So show your wrist follow through, Matt. Okay. Everybody talks about wrist and, and different terminology. Dip your hand in the cookie jar, um, you know, wave goodbye, make the gooseneck, whatever it might be. That's all fine and good. Most people have that wrist uh, follow through down. But there's a couple things they neglect. Number one, to finish that shooting line, we want to get in a straight line all the way down here. To start that straight line, you have to have a straight elbow, okay? So too many kids I see that go up and they've got really good shoot, uh, shooting form, but they'll stop somewhere in here. And that was myself included as a player when I was young. The elbow needs to be extended, okay? That's gonna be repetition. Your elbow's gonna extend, it's gonna be the same every time. It's not gonna grow during a game. Whereas if you stop it short, which a lot of kids do, even if you follow through with the wrist, if you stop your elbow short, that shot's gonna be different every time. It's, it's physically impossible to stop at the same exact spot every time. So that's a big part of, of our follow through and our shooting line talk is finishing in that high shooting line, elbow above eyes, okay? As far as the wrists, you can use any terminology as far as that as you'd like. We talk about flopping the wrist instead of snapping the wrist because I think too often when you hear that snap your wrist, I think people yo-yo the ball, okay? Or they pull back on the string and, you know, sometimes that creates a knuckle effect. We, we just don't want that. So we tell the kids, flop that wrist through and then that comes to the final part where we, we break down the hand. With the hand, we want the ball really rolling off of two fingers primarily. And what are those two, Matt? Okay, the peace sign. Okay, these two fingers, we always talk about not shooting the basketball with your outside fingers, okay? And as they're younger kids, when you're working with younger kids, it's not realistic to really concentrate on this. And in fact, you can screw up their shot if they're, if they're really concentrating on those two fingers. So really work with those guys about spreading their fingers and then letting that ball roll off the middle fingers, okay? If it creates a side spin at all, then they know they're either using their pinky or what's most common is using that thumb and flicking through with the thumb which creates that side spin okay if they're using those middle fingers it should come basically right back to them on the spin okay so that's a little bit more about the shooting line when we talk about beef um, on the next video we'll talk a little bit more about rhythm shooting and how we incorporate that into live drills